Like you should not have a goal of like, oh, I want 10,000 followers by this date. Your goal should be to consistently post at minimum one thing per, per day, every single day for six consecutive months. The only thing people care about is did you make the client's money or no? Now what's gonna happen is if you if you pass like the check of that, like does this person seem as if they know what they're talking about? They're gonna click on your link. They're gonna go to the actual landing page. Yeah. So what do you wanna have on the landing page is- We've got some Hey, I'm young. Luis. And this is Luis. And welcome to the Content is Profit Podcast. In here, you're gonna get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and and anything and everything you need to know about content, all this while having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple, entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. That's right. I know classic Hispanic DJ stuff in there, but I know. anyways, welcome back to Content's Profit. We got some people coming in. Hello, everybody. If you are, put a hashtag live in the comments. And if you're listening to yep. or watching the replay, put hashtag replay. What's up? Uh, that must dude. be, that must be Tim. He said, got coffee. Got coffee. That's <laughs> got Tim coffee. For sure. We did get coffee. What's up, Tim? Good seeing you, my man. But okay, so uh, if you guys are enjoying this show and the guests and the value and all the stuff, the riffing, the Fonzie's research, talk to me about Fonzie's research. That has been really solid lately, man. Good Tanya job. alert. Tanya, Tanya alert. alert. Anyways, go, go yeah. ahead and follow the show in your favorite <laughs> podcasting platform. That is right. And if today's guest help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and leave a five-star review. That's right. Let's do this. Today, we have one of our own Twitter homies in the house. <laughs> He's known as a cold email wizard, and he'll help you build a badass offer, generate leads for your business, and add an extra 10K to your business. Ooh, he's already taken three companies to seven figures. By the age of 25, he had made five million macaroos Ooh. and now leads a team of 21 people. Pretty badass if you ask me. Yes. Let's just get this started. Please welcome the one and only Daniel Fazio. What's up, bro? Thank you for having me on. Thank you for the very nice intro. I appreciate it very much. <laughs> just saying, if you have a live event, just call the Biz Bros and, uh, you know, we can do this all over again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds good. I, I, I like the, the, the performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we bring the, the Hispanic party to the podcasting <laughs> to the world. Podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah. Dude, Daniel, it's uh, it's an honor having you here, man. That when Fonzie, like, he was, like, he's been consuming your content for a while now. He's like, man, you have to, like, check this guy out. <laughs> Mike. Oh, so good. Bro, he's legit. He's <laughs> consistent. <laughs> and honestly, you know, I you can see the results. And I know you send a few of the podcasts that you've been interviewed on and you talk about social proof. And I'm sure we're going to get to that in a little bit. But just to kickstart today's conversation, you know, off with the boom. So people get motivated and they're like, you know what? I am ready to sit down in front of my computer and send 100 cold emails why don't you share <laughs> with us right now a quick win that somebody can have on cold email, whether that is a mindset change or whether that is a quick little framework that they can start implementing. Yeah, so I think uh, in, in regards to cold email, it's it's only going to work for a B2B offer, right? So I, I'm not sure what, what kind of products your audience is selling, but it, it's primarily for a B2B, right? So it's not going to be like a B2C consumer type thing. And it works best if what you're selling is a lot of money. Right. So what you've probably seen in your concept of cold email is probably centered around like, oh, this is spammy or like you might have like the Nigerian scammer type thing <laughs> concept inside your head. But let me let me put it like this. If you're selling like, um, let's say you're selling like an advertising service and you've worked with a bunch of clients, maybe let's say you've made your clients like millions of dollars and you start sending cold emails to like e-commerce brands. Mm. You whip up a cold email real fast. And it's just like, hey, name a little bit of personalization. Um, Hey, Dan, I just got your ads over here and wanted to send over an email um, and ask if you'd be interested in scaling with Google ads. Let's say you use Google ads. I, I worked with company one, two, and three and was able to make them a couple million dollars doing it. And it's just super simple emails. Yeah. Like it's like three sentence emails, four sentence emails. And you don't really want to complicate it because you, you inherently have to think of like, if you're, if you're trying to sell a high ticket product, the only people that are going to purchase high ticket products are people who run successful companies and people who run successful mm -hmm. companies are inherently busy, right? Mm -hmm. So if you send a paragraph essay and an email, it's probably just not going to get read. 
So yep. a concept you should probably understand is what, what people do when they read an email is they're going to read like the first sentence, then go to the end and then like backtrack. But if it's, if the entire thing is like three sentences, they'll just read through the whole thing. Mm. It, is, it needs to be just so straightforward. And you're either going to typically the best call to action is asking for a reply or if they want more information to which then you would engage in a sales process. And a good sales process is, is typically sending like a loom, right? Mm. So it's like a, a lot of people will say, hey, just send looms off the bat or just send personalized looms all the time. But the mm. problem with that is it takes an astronomical amount of effort and time. So you're going to essentially yeah. be like a full-time person making like making looms all day. Yeah. So if you instead just changed it to like, hey, do you want to see a loom? Or like, hey, would yeah. this be something you're interested in? Then you can send it after that happens. And essentially what you're doing, like what you would send to them after, is like a mini video sales letter. So I don't know if anyone yeah. is 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 familiar with VSLs, yeah. but yeah. like that's essentially what you would do is just yeah. make a VSL for every single person. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, we, we, we see the two comma club award there in the back. Congrats on that. Uh, so we, I have the dude, I have the gum road one. No way. It, it looks like it, it legit looks like it was made in an arts and crafts store. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I mean, it looks great on camera with the, the collar. Yeah, <laughs> it, hey, pops. Hey, it pops. It yeah, pops. Right? It pops. Uh, Daniel, by the way, uh, for those that are tuning in, obviously, th this, go back and re-listen from like this first five minutes and go implement like right away. Like that is an amazing framework. Very easy to follow, right? Yeah. Um, and I, I know Fonzie here's like 300,000 questions, but I'm, I'm you know, we have been familiar with cold email. We've faced resistance doing cold email. I mean, we've been in the in the content world for for a while now. We've been doing the business for about almost eight years now, which is crazy. And then, uh, but we face a lot of resistance, right? So I can see where people can be like, "Oh man, like this." What are some beliefs that people have to like crush <laughs> around cold email to go actually go and execute? Right? I'm sure like you talk about uh, about this a lot with the people that you that you work with with your team members. Like, what are some things that if somebody's taking you know, there's a lot of friction for them to go execute. What do they have to crush right off the bat uh, to go execute? Yeah, so here's a here's a really interesting concept, and this centers around both cold email and both cold DMs. Like, say you're sending a like a DM on Twitter or something like that. So, what's going to happen with any person who would be interested in any capacities? They're all going to do the same exact thing every single time. Mm. So, I'll just use cold DMs as an example. You send a cold DM to somebody. Before they respond to your cold DM, they're going to go to your profile. Mm. And now a lot of people will say, oh, no, people who are busy aren't going to look at your profile. I have 113,000 Twitter followers. I get like 50 messages a day, mm. like at minimum. I'm going to your, I see the DMs. So you can say like people don't look at the emails or they don't look at the DMs. They do because I do. <laughs> and what's going to happen is they're going to go to your profile. Now, a mistake a lot of people will make, say they're sending cold, cold DMs. Maybe your profile is filled with stuff that just has no symmetry with what you're selling in any capacity. So it's like a bunch of retweets of sports and whatnot. And it just has nothing to do with business at all. Right mm -hmm. now, what's going to happen is if you if you pass like the check of that, like, does this person seem as if they know what they're talking about? They're going to click on your link. They're going to go to the actual landing page. Yeah. So what do you want to have on the landing page is. You want a video sales letter and you want to have an actual offer and you want to have social proof. And you were saying this before and how I would get into this and, and I, I, I'll kind of just loop it in now. But if you're selling a B2B offer, like you're selling your product or service to other businesses, and this, this really centers around like B2B services, like it's like an agency service or maybe it's like a coaching product or something yeah. like that. The only thing people care about is did you make the client's money or no? Yeah. So like what will happen with people is they'll make like these case studies and it'll be like, we decreased their lead cost 20% or we increased lead flow 30%. And it, it's, it's just a bunch of stuff that doesn't matter. Like it, it just absolutely does not matter in any capacity. Mm. The only thing that somebody is concerned with is did you make them money, mm. right? So, I mean, I could show you my sales page. It's like clientascension.com slash schedule. That's yeah. where you get to after you opt in to the, to the, the opt-in page. Yeah. What you'll see on there is video sales letter. And yeah. then 
I've embedded client interviews and the headline of it is how Chandler made three and a half million dollars, how Colin hit a hundred K a month, how Kyle hit 70 K a month. It's not how Kyle got 14 sales calls, but no one cares about the sales call. It's the end goal, right? No one is, no one's buying. We got them 30 million views. Who cares? Did you make the money or no? Yeah. And it's really incredible because you, there's a lot of people and they'll have like really good work. And this happens with my clients all the time. They'll, they'll, they'll do really good work and they won't like ever say what it is. Mm. Like it's just what they won't say how much money they made. And I'll give you like a really good example of this. There's this one girl who, um, um, she just Pinterest ads and she's made her clients like, millions of dollars like legitimately millions of dollars at like a 5x row ass 8x row ass it's like absolutely absurd results mm. and it's just nowhere on the landing page i'm like that's the only <laughs> thing that it's the only <laughs> thing that matters it's like you don't need the like copywriting is important but it's more like the fundamentals of the copywriting so it's like yeah showing proof and evidence that your thing works is inherently a risk reversal Yep. Right. So you have like two things that that make up a risk reversal. It's a guarantee. And then it's proof that it works for other people, because with people, the the pain of losing one hundred dollars hurts more than making one hundred dollars feels good. So it's like what you're trying to do. The only thing you're trying to do is invoke the perception that if you work with us, the probability that it works is extremely high. Yeah. And you can do that with a guarantee and social proof. And you can pick one or the other. But if you have both, it works so hilariously well. And maybe you guys saw this. I I posted this um a couple of days ago where it was like it was a it's a giant just flow chart of do you need a guarantee? <laughs> and like I can visual I, I can like explain how it works now, but it basically you're gonna go through these series of questions where it's like are you solving a real problem for a niche? And if the answer yeah. is no, then it's just nothing will work, right? So if you answer yes, I'm solving a real problem, the next question is going to be, are you using a completely new and unheard of way to solve it? If the answer is yes, you can get away without a guarantee. But if the answer is no, which is going to be probably every single person watching this 99.9999% of everybody you're selling like google ads or email marketing or stuff it's not completely new yeah so you're going to answer no to that uh-huh. right and then the next question will be are you charging an abnormally low amount of money if the answer is yes you can get away without a guarantee but again 99.99999% of you are not going to be charging an abnormally low amount of money so you're going to go to the next question which is do you have quantifiable client results Mm. If the answer is no, you need a guarantee. Mm. If the answer is somewhere like, yeah, you've got some, maybe it's like less than $100,000 of quantifiable results, you should probably have a guarantee. But if you've made your clients like millions and millions of dollars, you can get away without a guarantee. Mm. But there's, there's basically no situation where having a guarantee isn't going to result in, in more money. So it's just, it's just goes back to that risk reversal thing. It's, Guarantee quantifiable results. You just need to amp those up as hard as is conceivably possible. And then everything from there just works so much better, right? So it's like if you took if you took two separate businesses and you were sending cold emails, same exact script, same exact industry, same exact company size, same exact person contacted, and you had one person has like a generic landing page. Like we do email marketing, like, okay, cool. And then you have the the next person where they have a landing page. There's a video sales letter. There's an offer with a guarantee. They've made their clients hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. Same exact email script. The person with the guarantee and the quantifiable results is going to have astronomically higher results. So everyone wants to go back to like, they want the one magic trick that does everything. Yeah. I think it's the email script, but the actual magic trick is just reversing risk as much as possible. Mm. Yeah, so good. Uh, by the way, you're so passionate about this. I feel like <laughs> you get a lot of people that have a lot of mental blocks when it comes to showcasing these results 
or you know working with the guarantees and stuff like that and i i feel like you've explained it probably to your clients so many times and trying to get it through their head that you're so passionate about it <laughs> and i you know for a fact that I, i follow you on twitter i know that a lot of the content that you put out there is in terms of that so i'm sure that is also a of course content that resonates with a lot of people that's probably why you keep talking about it again and again and again right because it drives results i'm sure we can go ahead and change something in our landing page and we'll probably see an immediate change just by, you know, framing things this way, right? Like you said, uh, guarantee and the quantifiable results. So now, you know, I want to kind of like put a bookmark on this and yes, we're going to end up, I think this is one of the first steps to getting those, the people that are listening right now to those extra 10 K a month. Right. And of course, in the one I know more, go and talk to Daniel. Uh, he's amazing, as you guys can tell. But I want to understand a little bit and get people also related to you on how did you get there, man? Like, how, how did you start your this agency that you're that you're doing right now? You had a few previous successes in business as well. So what is the the quick story in there? Right. About yeah. how, how do you flourish as a marketer? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, um, my very first business I ran was, um, it was an Instagram growth agency. Mm. And the way I started that was I was at a bar with one of my friends and he showed me like these guys on Instagram and they're driving like Maseratis and Range Rovers. And at this point I was like 20 years old or like 21 or something like that. And I was like, what are these guys selling? Like, what are they doing exactly? And he's like, Oh, they're running a Instagram growth agency. It's like, all right. So I went and followed them next day. I go on my computer. I go look at the page. Like, all right, how, what are they selling? And then if you just look at what is on the page, they were promising a specific amount of followers within a month. Yeah. And then they had a bunch of social proof of before and after photos of their clients started with this mm. much. Now they have this much. So I was like, all right, I'm going to replicate this, but I need, if I want it to work, I probably have to get those before and after screenshots. So I found out how to grow the Instagram accounts first. You need to know how to fulfill the actual service. Yep. So it was using follow on follow. This doesn't work anymore, so you can't do this. <laughs> but I, look, I learned how to automate that. I found a bunch of my friends and like people from college, and I just offered to do it for them for free because I wanted the before and after screenshots. That was the only function of this. And I made that extremely clear to them. It's like, I'm going to do this for free. Only if you agree that I can put your before and after photo on this page. And they agreed. So I yeah. did that for about three months. I was able to get five of them. Got them like, I don't know, like 3,000, 4,000 more followers. Put them on a landing page. Made the pricing. $97 a month for between 500 to 1,000 followers a month. And then a, one, a 147 for like 1,000 to 1,500 or something like that. So this only worked because of the, the before and after. And then yeah. what I did is I would go on Instagram. I picked a niche. I picked fitness, fitness coaches and fitness influencers and, and whatnot like that. And if you go on Instagram, there's an email button on the profiles, mm. like on a business profile, they can have their email. And I figured, I was like, I don't want to reach out for my personal page. Cause it's not like business oriented, but I had a landing page so I could, take the domains forward yeah. forward like dummy domains to my main domain send yep. cold emails from that and just collect click the email button copy it put it in a google sheet right and i was just manually collecting these emails all day mm. and sending thousands of emails and split testing copy and i was getting like free trial accounts of this software <laughs> called yesware and it, uh, at first i didn't even know you could automate it and then i found that and then i found some other better ones over time and just split testing these. And I was able to get that. I think it was, I was, I was about to turn 22 years old and that business I had got to like 12,000 a month or wow. something like that. So that felt really good. So yeah. I was like right out of college and, and that, and that was doing really well. Then that algorithm change happened and it destroyed the business overnight. It just couldn't get <laughs> it. I was, like, I was like, damn. So from there, I had to do something. So I was like, well, I just built up this business using cold email. Let me go send cold emails for other people, mm. other marketing agencies. So that's exactly what I did. I started that up, 
um i was into russell brunson stuff and i was thinking yep. like a fun, how do i get like an absolutely absurd amount of people into this and like oh i can make like a, basically just make a fun i can start with a course and then upsell people to um the cold email as a service so i ended up making a course I, i've sold like a million dollars of a cold email course i don't sell it anymore but that's how i get the the, the gumroad thing over there <laughs> um but then i was like i was so many people were in that course and i was linking them out to other software apps like other people's software maybe you get some affiliate links but it was like it just like it wasn't enough so it's like i feel like i'm just, just like growing another person's business it was an absurd amount of people that were buying it so i was like okay let me just let me let me replicate every single software that is inside this inside the course i replicated every single one so i have four software companies now all for oh. that so like three for lead scraping and one for sending emails so i own all of the software with it Mm. And then I was like, let me, let me kind of turn this into like a done with you product. Cause so if you make like a triangle at the top would be done for you services, it's the least amount of people that can buy that. Cause it's the yep. most expensive. And then you have done with you. And now that, that's kind of like a coaching program with like done for you aspects in it. And then more people can buy that because it's more accessible. It's it would be effectively less money than a done for you service. Yeah. And then there's do it yourself at the bottom, which the most people can afford, and that's like a course. Hmm. So I hit every single one of those, and like different variations of it. So it was like course, software, cold email agency, coaching thing, and then. So now, now you just own everything, and it's like a, a giant vertical integration of a single mechanism. Yeah. Wow. Dude, that is so good. I and I can see, obviously, how you integrate it now. What you're talking about the guarantees and the social proof into every part of that process, right? I'm sure every single sales page had a whole bunch of social proof, right? And um, I'm curious. You said at the at the beginning, right, that you sell through a, a VSL, small VSL. Were you using small VSLs for each one of these things or you started using the VSL only to book for the done for you? There's so like, I don't think there's really any situation where having a VSL is going to result in less conversions. Mm -hmm. And like this applies to software too. And if you think about the way people purchase software, it's they want to see the user interface. Yeah. That's like actually what is happening. People just don't, some people will get on demos. People buy in different ways. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you think about it, I can say like, oh, cold email is the way, but it's like in reality, only a certain kind of person is going to convert off a of cold email. Yep. And then someone else can say cold calling is the way, it's like, which is correct for a very specific set of the population. And then there's like, oh, ads are the way which is true for a very specific set of the population. And there's like content marketing, like, yeah. yes, but it's slow and it works. Obviously, like I do it. So it's, it's like, I can sit here and tell you, oh, you got to do cold email. And it's like, yeah, but you should probably also actually do everything. Yeah. Because cold email will work, but only with a certain set of people. It's like, oh, you should hire SDRs to cold call. Yeah, you should do everything. Can, can you uh, can you walk us through, like, how do you prioritize these different channels, right? Because, you know, uh, not only us, but people come to us and they have different things where, you know, they have a massive email list and they, they want to leverage that or they have some kind of a following and they want to leverage, you know, direct DMs and a pipeline through that. They have a podcast, right? How, how do you and your team prioritize, like, who to go after first? And then can you walk us through that process or, like, uh, specifics on, like, uh, you know, we do 10% of our time here. We do 20% of our time there. Is there, is that how you guys operate? Like, how would you recommend somebody that has these multiple channels, but are having a hard time to choose where to go after? Yeah. So you should be able to get to like 50 K a month solely off of like content marketing and outbound. Right. So like, just to reiterate it again, if your thing isn't B2B, just outbound isn't going to work. So just take yeah. it off the table. It just yeah. actually won't. So you you should start with the thing that is the least cost because it's like you're you're you probably didn't just raise like 10 million dollars and you could spend an absolutely ton of money on it so like <laughs> you're, you're probably just a person running a standard business and you want to like make profit and like this is your livelihood this is how you pay for rent and eat food 
Yeah. Right. So it's like you can't really afford to like cash flow negative acquire customers with ads. Like you mm-hmm. just can't do that. So obviously you want to go to content marketing. That's that's basically where you should start, right? And then you have um, you have like here's here's something I've uh, I've learned pretty recently um about like YouTube because I've been getting into YouTube. I'm posting a lot of YouTube videos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Twitter will work fast but will not scale hard. YouTube will work slow, but will scale extremely hard, like extremely far. You'll make a lot of money on YouTube. It's going to give years, right? So I've, I've had my Twitter account called email wizard for like around three years is 113,000 followers. And now if you were to look like the distribution of amount of money acquired over time, it's like, it does pretty I mean, you can live off it for a little bit and then it just, it just keeps going. And it, it, it just content marketing just takes a really, really long time. And I actually want to talk about a conversation I was having earlier today with one of my clients. Cause we do content marketing stuff and client ascension too. Hmm. And he was telling me, he's like, he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm working some leads right now. And like, I, I, I feel like, I feel like this, I want it to work faster. So it's like, all right, let me go to your Twitter account really quick. And since February, so it's February 13th right now. And I looked at his account. He's tweeted six times in February. Mm. So it's like, mm. you tweeted six times in February mm. and you didn't even plug the link to your thing once. And then I showed him my account. I was like, I've tweeted 47 times in February and I've posted the link to my product like 14 times in February. And I've retweeted a bunch of my tweets a bunch mm. of times. So it's like it increases it further. And I've been replying to people and like in conversations on Twitter. So it's like I have done legitimately like a hundred times more than you have in February alone. So I'm like, you have this concept that you can just like, oh, I'll just like put stuff out like whenever. And it's like, it does not work like that. Like, this is not a game. You're trying to like, you're running a company. Like you need to... You have an obligation to turn this into a machine. Like this is not like you tweet when you feel like it. It's not like you you film a YouTube video when you feel like it or you send cold emails when you feel like it. It's like you yeah. have to hit a specific KPI. Like you literally have to do that. Like you can't just like dilly-dally around with it. And then something people will will all logically come to is how did you tweet 47 times? Like you came up with 47 different ideas? <laughs> and the answer is actually no. I say the same things over and over and over and over and over again, just with different syntax. You say the exact same thing over and over yeah. and over. And you might like actually have like 10 unique ideas, but each unique idea has like a subsection of different things you could talk about. Yeah. Right. Or like examples of how something applied to you. And you just say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Right. It's kind of like this is why propaganda works. There's like some dude like literally wrote a book on like how to do propaganda. And like marketing is propaganda. You're trying to like get people to to buy into an idea. And essentially like the whole gist of it is you just repeat the same thing over and over and over again. So it's like what stops people from doing content marketing mm. is they just feel like they run out of things to say. But it's like, mm-hmm. well, they're just saying it again. Like they just keep <laughs> yeah. saying it over and over yep. and over again. Yeah, uh, that, that's definitely one of the biggest problems that we notice too with our clients is the fact that they believe they need to have a brand new idea every single time they create. It's like they just keep recycling, keep saying the same thing, right? Um, over and over again, like you said, but it's... Uh, it's challenging for people to have that consistency and it becomes boring right to one point of saying, dude, I've said the same thing 20,000 times, but it's kind of difficult for people to understand that not always that, that, that the people that are watching the content is not just the same 10 people every single time they post, right? Like it's just different audiences, right? Like different audiences are being introduced to your message. So how do you get that through, somebody's mind right like how for example you say you guys do some content marketing with your clients right like how are you guys helping them to stay consistent is it systems processes is it more on the mindset side of things uh how do you guys deal with this 
Yeah. So it's, 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 it all, it all comes down to like making a process insisting. So like, let me, let me paint this example. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with this girl on TikTok. I think she's called XL girl. Uh, I talks am. about Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. 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 So she has sold like $30 million of Microsoft Excel courses. Wow. All of her videos are about formulas and Microsoft Excel. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's the same thing <laughs> over and over and over again. It's like I go on TikTok sometimes and I, I get this account a lot. And um, what they do is they clean rugs. It's just videos of them cleaning rugs. And it's the same, it's the same process of cleaning a rug every single time. Right. Yeah. It's like yeah. you spray it with water, then you put this thing on it, then you scrub it, and you take the, this little scrubbing machine, and then you just do the same thing over and over and over again. Every single video is the same exact thing, but just a different rug. Mm. It's yeah. the same thing. He has millions <laughs> of followers, gets hundreds of millions of views. And it's like if he was selling rugs, he might be selling rugs. He probably <laughs> legitimately make like tens of millions of dollars selling rugs. Yeah. It's the same thing over and over again. And then I have a client who does like conversion rate optimization stuff. And it's like, all right, bro, just make videos of this split test one. Like, why did this split test win? Continuously over and over and over and over and over and over again. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to essentially like what you would do is like the sourcing of the content is like trying to find one split test per day and mm -hmm. then just distributing that to different forms of media. So it's like on Twitter, yeah. it's probably like yeah. a Twitter thread. So it's like, why did this win? And then it's like TikTok. It's like green screen video behind you, like pointing at things and explaining why. And then that also can go on reels and YouTube shorts and then making like a full length video of it on YouTube. And this could be like a two minute video. It's, you you have one thing, one singular idea, and you just distribute it to every single piece of media. And then now what's going to happen is this is like um, content is it's super slow to work, but like you you do this for like a year straight. Like you should not have a goal of like oh I want ten thousand followers by this date. Your goal should be to consistently post at minimum one thing per, per day, every single day for six consecutive months. Yes. You should never have like an output goal. It should always be an input goal. And it's just, it's, it's a mechanizing everything. Like you just, you just need to make a system behind it. And then all you have to do is you have a checkbox you have to hit every single day. Find the split test. Make the video, make the thread. Bam, bam, bam. Every single day. It's all you have to do. Yeah. Dude, uh, this is like music, at least to my ears. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, it, you know, it's, it, it's funny because, you know, Fonzie is the idea guy, right? I'm more of the yeah. systems guy, right? So we, we meet in the middle. But, you know, in... Uh, over the last like three years that we've done with the podcast, you know, there's a system obviously behind it and the content that goes out and it's always evolving. But on my side, I'm always like pushing towards that. What, what is the output that we're, what is the content that we're putting out there? What is the data that we're receiving from that content? Right. Can we improve on that? Right. And as we've done and practiced our message over and over, not only with the podcast, but with our own content too, it's like, okay, these are the, the pillars. Like these are the categories. These are the things that we can continue to do that. And right. Th we transfer that into, uh, obviously the people that we help as well. Uh, and I love that we're focusing on consistency and frequency and building the system behind that. Right. Uh, but at the same time, there's a lot of people out there, right. That see as an asset, you know, the creative side of things. And, uh, and is that, so is, is the, is like the, the crude truth that we need to like do the checkbook thing, right. If, if it's a business or there's a happy balance in between those two, because I can definitely see, you know, how those can, can be helpful. Right. Um, I'm personally a big fan of obviously the system, right? Co conquer the consistency and the frequency. And then you can add a layer on top of that where it's like, okay, in creative times, we can also test and write these things out, right? If, if it feeds your soul, but as a business, right? I feel like that process, right? Has to be in place uh, for a business to, to put their message out there consistently over a long period of time. Yeah. So like if I were to, if I were to, I feel as if every concept on earth really does just deduce to the most simple thing ever, right? So if I were to, my, 
I can have like a lagging indicator of what I'm looking for in my business. So that's call schedule, right? So now if I were to look at how do I get more calls scheduled? There was a one-to-one -one direct relationship between how much content I post and how many calls get scheduled mm -hmm. every single day. So now what I can, what I can do is like, all right, I want to close, I want to close 10 deals this week. So that means I got to get like 30, 35 calls booked. So that means that throughout the weekday, 35 divided by five, I need to book at least seven calls per day. Now what I'm going to sit here and do is I'm going to tweet enough and then like plug a link to my offer under it sufficiently enough until I get at least seven calls booked every single day. Mm. And just doing that. And like, there's, it, there's never a situation where that doesn't work. And it's like, and you can even deduce it further where it's like, all right, well, to get that many calls, I need this many people to the landing page. So it's like, well, how do I get more people to the landing page? It's like more people have to see the link. So there's a direct correlation between how many people are going to get to the landing page and how many times I tweet a link to the landing page. So it's like, then I'll just tweet the link to the landing page more. It's like super simple, right? It, it, there's This never doesn't work ever. And now someone could sit here and be like, yo, guys, how did you how did you grow your podcast to to X amount of downloads? How did you how how did you do that? And the answer is that you posted over 300 episodes. You've done one every single every single week for three straight years. And it's like it was just a constant oscillation of like, yeah, we posted the episodes on YouTube and then we made a Facebook group and then we started doing clips from it and posting that on TikTok and going back and forth with that. And it's it's there's this concept that I was talking with one of my clients and it was, you would be better off. Like imagine a situation, you make a clip go super viral. And what happens is say you, you get like a hundred thousand followers in a day or something like that. And then compare that to somebody who's been posting like, not like super viral stuff, but has been really consistent with it for like two years yeah. and also has a hundred thousand followers. So the person who's been doing it for two years at a hundred thousand followers is more than probably making more money than the person who got a hundred thousand followers like immediately. And the reason why is because this concept of conversion windows, right? So if you imagine mm -hmm. a funnel where it's like at the top, you have the people who are least aware of it at the very very top you have people who don't know you exist and then like right inside of it the people who have like seen you once and basically what happens is there is a direct correlation one-to-one -one relationship with the amount of times somebody sees you to how close they get to purchasing your thing so this is frequency yeah right a lot of you guys if you run ads you understand the concept of frequency like how 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 many times per week does this person see me now, this applies to every human on the planet. Anybody who's ever heard of you ever, your entire TAM, total addressable market. Yeah. The more they see you, the closer and closer they get to conversion. So it's like not only when you're tweeting or posting content, are you acquiring new people who see you for the first time? You're also pushing more frequency on the people who do know you exist and pushing them further down the funnel. So there was this, there's this quote from uh, Grant Cardone and he goes, your creative ad will not beat my frequency. Mm. Yeah. Which is so hilariously true. It's like, if you look at Grant Cardone, it's like, he it makes like $250 million in sales a year, literally a quarter billion dollars. And it's like, why does he make so much money? It's because, the entire planet sees him. <laughs> like, like yeah. everyone knows who he is. And you, yeah. if you follow him, I don't know, you follow him on Instagram, posts like three, five times a day. He tweets all yeah. the time. Like, probably like it's at a certain point, you hit enough to where like your your let's say there's 30 million people who know of Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone 
could like exclusively run retargeting ads and like still make a quarter billion a year. You see what I mean? Because yeah. it's just, there's so much frequency around it. We just converts people so much faster than you. Yeah. Because he's so absurd with just the raw quantity of content and just like touch points that get exerted out from his entity. It's absolutely insane. Like, and, and, and you can dance around this fact as long as you want, but it's like, it just <laughs> always comes down to like, you just need more frequency. Yeah. Like, that actually yeah. is it. Yeah. I, I, and I think we mentioned that. I, I mean, music to my ears again. I think like everybody else, like, <laughs> hey, you know, do I need to post? We'll just send them this interview. But not only a frequency on content, too, frequency of offers, right? Frequency of outbound if you're doing B2B specifically, right? And it's around that that, you know, people should be building uh, their stuff. So including us, right? Like there's so sometimes that you're like, you might be posting for a long period of time and you might not even see the results, right? So then how can we analyze that content? How can we analyze, is the message the right message, right? Is the thing the right thing? Uh, are we promoting? Is it clear? Is it simple? Like there are all these things that we can always do to improve. But like you mentioned, it's like, how can uh, we set up as a company a goal for frequency, right? How frequent can we be online on the specific channel that you're moving on? Or if you have multiple channels there, right? So, uh, Twitter, email, uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever it is, uh, frequency should be a, ma a massive metric that, that we should be looking at. Right. And, and then build around that, right? It's like, perfect. We need to do more because this is the direct correlation from mm -hmm. that one post into my calendar. <laughs> right. Perfect. How do we actually get more of that done? Right. And, uh, you know, I'm definitely going to, there's, there's a workshop that we did at Podfest a couple of weeks ago where we talk about these six stages, right? And part of it is the creation and the production. These are two of the stages and it's mostly where people uh, form their, their content, right? In a way. And then we have the distribution, which is how we execute on that frequency, right? So I highly encourage people to, if you have any questions, send us obviously a quick DM, communicate with with everybody here on this call, and uh, and and you can ask us questions on how we do it, right? Every single person here in this call has a system that we've been able to to uh, to improve and uh, over time, and you are also able to create that own system for yourself based on your own capacity, your team capacity. But again, keeping very close to to your goals, that frequency and that direct correlation to your calendar. Uh, so Daniel, this has been so well, awesome. Fuzzy. I, I have a, a good question here, Daniel. A, a curiosity, honestly, because I've seen, you know, you are a great marketer, man. I can tell you're passionate about it, <laughs> uh, you know, and you've tried multiple things. You've been successful in multiple things. And you are one of the few marketers, right? And I'll say that, that I've seen advertising in Twitter. Most people go to like Facebook. Or TikTok, and I just keep seeing your your ad on Twitter over and over again, and I'm like, I mean, obviously he keeps spending money because he's working out for him, right? Clearly, uh, so is is Twitter an underused space for advertisers and marketers, uh, or maybe you don't want to share, you know, because you want to keep it all to yourself, but <laughs> <laughs> so. So I, I was actually just banned from Twitter ads. I'll try to get it back, but I have business I have business partners and I'm just running the ads from their account. But it's like I'm I'm still like the one writing it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's still actually me. Um, which is actually really interesting. Alex Ramosi has talked about this. It's like you, you gotta like yeah. branch out the acquisition away from you as a as, as a person. I'm like, yeah, that's like actually super true. Um, but Twitter Twitter ads work now. They do not in the way that Twitter's really different. Um, so I've seen this before. And I don't know if you guys, maybe you've like, if you think about like coaching products or like, see, I, the way I'm thinking of is kind of like start an agency, like those kind of guys, dudes who like sell courses on Instagram and whatnot. And yeah, yeah. I've seen them come over to Twitter and just like fall completely flat because inherently Twitter is just a platform where people just are more intelligent. Like they kind of just do have a higher IQ than people on Instagram. And you can think of the reasoning for that is because it's just words, right? Obviously there's media, but like the inherent way that yeah. you would grow on Twitter is like 
your idea and not like a picture of your Lamborghini or something like that. Like, that, <laughs> yeah. like people, just, they're more like analytical and like you guys are on Twitter and like you're kind of like a, you guys are kind of like system marketing orientated. And if you try to like, I'm always kind of like a super, super like direct forward marketer where it's like <laughs> hey if you want a b2b business and you want to get clients with cold email i'll set it up for you and guarantee you add an absolute minimum of ten thousand dollars per month or you don't pay and like that that's like the whole ad or it's just like a selfie of me saying that but a lot of the targeting yeah. is to my own followers so it's actually just retargeting mm. which is a reason why you should do more content marketing so it's yep. like i'm running some youtube ads too right now and the targeting for my YouTube ads is anyone who's been to my website and anyone who's watched any of my YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. It's super hard to not make money with retargeting ads. Like it's extremely, <laughs> extremely difficult, right? And then you have like the metrics of like, of di directly this ad, how much money did this, the direct clicks from this ad make? But it doesn't even account for the fact that it was just, it was just another point of frequency. It was yeah. just another thing that there's no way that them seeing that ad didn't pu push them further down the funnel. There's, there's absolutely no way, right? And there's so many unquantifiable things that as you grow larger and larger and larger. So it's like, we're at, we're at 320,000 a month right now. So it's like, I mean, when you start to get to that level, it's like you start to do some unquantifiable things. I cannot put a direct quantification of what this appearance on this podcast will do, will do for me. HubSpot cannot do a direct quantification for you wearing that jacket yeah. and then them like you being in the HubSpot podcast network. It's just not going to happen. You know what I mean? So like there's a certain there's a certain level of like and e-com brands do this all the time where it's like yeah, the 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 TikTok ads aren't working but the the Facebook ads are and it's like well they're actually all working in tandem. Like at absolutely everything where it's like, oh, this email marketer isn't doing like a really good job. Everything like plays into it. It's all like cohesiveness Yeah. where you can't really like take one thing out because one thing feeds everything else. It's, it's like actually just how that works. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Do they I, have, I, I, I love that last statement about like it all fits into each other. You know, it, it all works cohesively because I feel like, and I read about it this morning is a lot of people just wait to have it perfect, right? The, the perfect tracking. I want to track every single click that I get and then they don't end up doing anything. So I like that mindset of, you know, I'm going to put here and that's going to push them down the funnel. And when they go to the other side, they're going to end yeah. up converting. And at the end of the day, obviously keep an eye on your numbers and see if it's actually, you know, feeding into that goal, those KPIs that you set up. But like you said earlier, right? Focus on the input goal, not just the output goal, right? So I did, is that, yeah. that frequency? I'm going to run these ads, right? For a specific amount of time. And then I'm going to see, boom, this is the amount of money we're making. Is it working? Yes, no, no. All right, I'm going to cut it off. Let's yes, yeah. let's do more of this. Yeah, I there's a concept that, you know, we talked about in the past, which is your content ecosystem, right? Like, where are you being present, right? And that can go from like one platform to multiple platforms, depending on your own capacity or your team's capacity, right? And then you can add, you know, the ads version, which is what you just explained. What is the overall gain of this? And I remember uh, most people, this is a conversation that I love having because most people are so in it, like it, it, like in the thing, like the, I'm so in the platform of Instagram and they never walk three steps back and they see the whole thing of like what's happening. Like just a couple of weeks ago, uh, I'm personally very new to Twitter. Like this is a platform that I, I've been just playing around. Fonzie has a little bit more experience on it, right? After this conversation, probably going to dive a little bit more into it. But I remember just uh, answering or retweeting uh, somebody else tweet last week. And I was like the first or the second comment there. And immediately that one tweet that I put under that one thread got like 13,000 uh, views. And I was like, what? This is insane. And then also people levitating towards my profile, right? New followers. And I'm like, this is insane. Like that's an indicator of something that went really good, right? So we can always step back like three steps and look at the data on whatever dashboard that you're using and be like, what are the outliers? What are the things that really worked? And maybe if you have 
you know, fr that frequency, you can identify two or three things that you put out there, three ideas, three pieces of content that then you can use for your ads, that then you can use to like redo another piece of content, that then you can go to the comments and reach out as an outbound strategy to the people that engage with you, right? So um, I I loved today's conversation, man. Daniel, it's, it has been an absolute pleasure. I'm pumped up, uh, bro. I'm, uh, a, I'm about to, after this, <laughs> after this, I'm about to post like 20 pieces of content, right? After this uh, episode. Uh, <laughs> then, as, as we wrap up, like there's, there's obviously an action point that we need to leave the people with like what is something and uh, you know we, we can talk on the b2b size specifically right uh may, unless fancy has a different idea but what is something that people can do today right to gain that traction towards that quantifiable result that we talk which is money right what is something that they can do today yeah so um whatever platform you use i don't know if that's twitter tiktok linkedin whatever post Post 90 pieces of content in the next 30 days. Like, just, just see what happens. But just actually, like, like more than you would feel is necessary to where, like, you're slightly uncomfortable with the amount that you're posting. To where, like, you feel like you're getting to the edge of, like, I'm being extremely incessant right now. <laughs> like, post just above that. When you feel like you've, like, all right, I've, I'm posting, like, way too much like you feel like you'd be annoying people like just keep going beyond that like get to that point yeah and then something very interesting is going to happen that fear of oh i'm going to annoy people will disappear when you see just how much more money you make hmm. like immediately like one-to-one -one relationship and you will you will say to yourself wow that belief i made up in my head was not real like you just made that up like you actually just made that up where it's like if i post if i post three instagram stories a day i'm gonna annoy people or if, if i post more than two tweets a day i'm gonna annoy people if i post more than five times a week on linkedin i'm gonna annoy people nope 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 you made it all up you have no data to back that whatsoever in any capacity ever you made it up yeah dude i I love that action point. Mm. By the way, we'll break it down, right? It's three a day. That's it. It's it's not it's not hard, right? Pick that platform, reduce the friction, right? We talk about this in the publishing pyramid. Uh, if it's just you or your team, I think this is a very simple instruction for your team. If you do yeah. have a team, it's like guys, I go th through my through my interviews, go through my content, you know, go through the things that I'm saying every single day in the in these team calls, right? Grab three pieces of content and put them out there. Uh, you know, if it's just you, again, remove the friction. What is something that happened today? What is something that you consumed today? What yeah. is something that you want to share today, right? Related to your business, post that link and see the relation, man. I, I, I love yeah. the fear will disappear once you see how much money you make. Yeah, that's pretty good too. Uh, and yeah, like you said too, don't forget to add the call to action, right? Let them know where they got to go so they can buy from you <laughs> and, and invest. It's, it's, it's big mistake. Big mistake people make is don't make content and not even post the link. So you post the, post the link. People will not, like this is very interesting concept in marketing. You have to be so absolutely specific about what you want people to do. If you want people to go to your landing page, post the link to the landing page. It will not happen any other way. Like you have to do that. Don't make, there's no point of making the content unless your landing page is plugged like the link on your story like the link under your tweet the link on the post like there's no yeah. point in posting the thing unless you tell them to go to it there's no point in making a youtube video if there's no call to action in the video yeah there's there's literally no point you have to put every single one needs a call to action there's no it's the only function of the content marketing <laughs> in the first place. Dude, I love it. I love, I love, I love how direct you are, and yep. uh, and I and I think the the passionate people and the ones that really want to take action and, and make this you know, win for themselves are going to take action after this episode. There's a lot of what we call golden boulders. There's a lot of value here that people can take and, and go with it. Starting from the first win at the beginning of the episode, all the way through like how to actually tackle your content. Yep. Um, yeah. A lot of synergies here. Yeah. You'll see a lot of clips. We'll tell you on all of them. We'll send them to you <laughs> yeah. too. Uh, dude, man, is there anything else that you want to share with, uh, with us before we head out? 
Oh, uh, no, that's it. Everybody uh, go follow me on YouTube and, and yes. Twitter. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're going to put the links right there. Sure. Yeah. Fonzie, anything else? Uh, no, nah, dude, appreciate it. Appreciate the energy. Appreciate the, the wisdom. Uh, dude, it's awesome. I've, I've, if somebody heard this and they're not, you know, full of energy right now to go and take action, well, I don't know. Just <laughs> hit me up and I'll send you a Red Bull to see if that, if that helps. <laughs> well, bro, that was amazing. Appreciate you. Yeah, the appreciate day. you, gentlemen. Thank you. With that said, guys, we've got some. Oh, no, not that one. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning to the Kinsey's Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Biz Bros Co. That is Ryan and Daniel here. Help you move one step closer towards your goal. Please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review and go to contentisprofit.com. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Bye, guys.